So here's the ceiling. And then you've got a spring scale. And then you've got, hanging off of that, you have a mass. And that mass is in a beaker of water, or oil, or what is it in? Oil. It's in oil. Yeah. Beaker of oil. And this is sitting on a scale down here. And the question is, what are the two readings on the two scales, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, it tells you that the beaker itself, okay, so the mass of the beaker is one kilogram? Yeah. Okay. And it has 2.25 kilograms of oil. Okay, so the mass of the oil is 2.25 kilograms and it also gives you the density of the oil 916 is that less dense or more dense than water less dense good what's the density of water thousand good yeah that's so there's just a few numbers that I especially to memorize gravity yeah what's, what's gravity uh, 9.81 9.81 and density of water you need to know that one there what was is, another one. There was, um, yep. I had to use a different problem. Atmospheric, it was pressure. atmospheric pressure. Yeah, do you know what atmospheric pressure is? It's, uh, I have it written down. It's 101.25. Um, I didn't, I don't think we mentioned anywhere that, um, that we needed to know that. I think I just kind of found that out by coming across the problem. Okay. Uh, yeah, those are the three numbers you need to know. Okay. Gravity, density of water, and atmospheric pressure. Just okay. off the top of your head, you just need to know those. All right. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Okay, so and it also gives density of oil, yeah. and uh, it says a 2.4 kilogram block. Okay, so the mass, I'll use a capital B for that, is 2.4 kilograms. Yeah. And it's made out of iron. That's important. Yeah, so I found the density of iron. Good. What's the density of iron? Or at least I found a density of iron because I looked it up online in a bunch of different, in a bunch of different places, and they gave me all, like, um changing answers but it was uh 7860 i put it as okay uh yeah and you're right the density of iron depends on which type of iron you're talking about especially when you look it up online you're gonna have right. a bunch of different alloys depending on what the manufacturing purposes were yeah um so i would suggest that you use the density that's given in your book so look it up there's oh, a, I there's didn't a even think to look in the book yeah there's a table in your book i don't remember which page is on but okay it's it's in your book use the density that's given in your book is it 7760? That sounds about right. Um, I don't I don't know it right offhand, but that sounds like that sounds like the right ballpark. Okay. We we can work with this for now, but right. but you should get that number exactly from your book. Yeah. For the pro um, for the purposes of the problem. Okay. And then so, let's see, and then it's suspended from the spring scale. And then find the equilibrium readings. Okay, so now tell me how you attack this problem. Um, I found the force of buoyancy for the Good. springs. Good. That's exactly right. That's okay, so okay. hold on. Before you go any further, identify the forces on this mass right here. What are the masses on this? I'm sorry, what are the forces um, on this mass right here? Buoyancy and tension. Okay, so you've got tension yes. pulling it up, T, and you also have, it's hard to write behind me, you also have. Yeah force of buoyancy pulling it up. Okay, so those are the two forces pulling it up. Oh. Why doesn't it go up? Because it um, has mass, I guess. Yes, and so what does that mean? It's, it's, an, equilibrium. it's an equilibrium, there's no acceleration. It, it means that there's the force of gravity pulling it down. Okay. So you've got another force pulling it down, force of gravity. Yeah, I did this all wrong. So these are your three forces on this. Okay, and you've got them labeled right. Buoyancy, tension, and gravity. And now you apply Newton's second law. Some of the forces equal ma, except there's no acceleration, so some of the forces equal zero. Yeah. So you wanna say, uh, <clears throat> uh, the force of buoyancy, 
plus tension. They're both positive because they're both going up. Minus force of gravity because it's going down. And these have to add up to zero. Yeah. Um, can I? It's. Can I show you how I found force of buoyancy? Yes. You can tell me did it yeah. Go ahead and show it to me. It's uh seven. I have some seven circle. Can you tell me if, if I need to like move it? Okay. Density times volume times gravity. Density of fluid, volume of object, gravity. Yes, that looks good. You've got your density there. It's a little on the blurry side, but I, yeah, I, I generally it looks like you did it right. I can't tell for sure. Uh, but let me just write it out. But okay. I think you, I think you've got it right. Okay, so this force of buoyancy is just like you said, going to be density, the density of uh, the fluid, which in this case is the oil. So this is the density of the oil times the volume of the object, which in this case is the the block, the iron. And and uh, and then nine point eight for gravity. Now, how did you get the yeah. volume of the block? Um, I used uh, pressure equals mass over volume, or density equals mass over volume. That sounds good. That sounds good. Density yeah. is mass over volume, so density is mass over volume, and so then you found volume by saying mass over density. Is that what you yeah. did? Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, so you're gonna find that. You're going to use this mass and this density and get volume and plug that in here. So, yeah, I got three. I, I redid it with the tent, with the, um, the, 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 the um, density that you gave me. So can, let me just uh, redo it. Okay. It shouldn't be too different, but... Um, just, it, it'll uh, just be slightly different, yeah. <clears throat> and I got 3.09 times 10 to the negative fourth. Does that sound about right for, for volume? That sounds about right. It should be a pretty small number. Yeah. Okay, and then you're going to, so now just going through my second law here, the next one is plus T. Now, here's the thing. We don't know that T. That's what we're trying to find. But that T is this, what this spring scale up here reads. So once we find T, we've got it made. Okay? All right. So for the force of buoyancy, 2.78, does that sound about right? That sounds right in the, in the right ballpark. I, I'm, okay. I'm just, you know, putting numbers in my head. I'm not punching it out exactly, but that sounds about right. Okay, and then we'll do minus, and instead of four FG, I'm going to write MG. Minus yeah. mass times gravity, and this has to add up to zero. I'm doing that equation right now. Okay, and then solve it for T. I'm punching, I'm punching it out too while you're doing it. What? I'm punching it out too while you're doing it. Oh, look at that. That's right. Oh, good. Okay. And for the bottom scale, it's just um, the various masses minus the top scale of reading. Which no, not quite. It's actually more complicated than that. Okay. Okay. So the bottom scale, what it has to do, <clears throat> it has to hold up the beaker, the oil, yeah, the part of the mass that the spring scale isn't holding up. Okay. And this force of buoyancy. Now, now that's the tricky one. Let me say this again. This scale has to hold up the force of buoyancy. Look at it this okay. way. Block, oil pushes block up, right? Yeah. Therefore, by the third law, block pushes oil down. Right. So therefore, this scale has to hold up that extra force. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so... To, so this scale has to read, um, well, let's see, I'll draw it in orange. 
but it's going to have to hold up. Uh, mass of the beaker times gravity plus uh, mass of the oil times gravity plus uh, the mass of the block times gravity minus the tension plus the force of buoyancy. All right, let me just punch that up real quick because I think I can do that. Okay, so it's just going to be all those things added together. I'm just making sure I don't do a, a button pushing error, you know? Yeah. These are the two tricky ones here on the end. Yeah. And the force of buoyancy is 2.78. Okay, I got 37.4. That's going to be a little high. Yeah, that's wrong. Um, let me punch it out and see what I get. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I got 37.44 as well. Yeah, um... So, let's see. Let me think through it again. <clears throat> got to hold up the beaker. Got to hold up the oil. It's got to hold up the rest of the block. Whatever the tension's not holding up. 
Oh. Sorry. I was wrong. It doesn't need to hold that up. The reason it doesn't need to hold this up is because this isn't touching the scale. Yeah. It is touching the oil though, increasing the, the, uh, how hard the oil is pushing on it. So you do have okay. to include this force of buoyancy over here. But oh, this so just the force of buoyancy? Yeah, so just the force of buoyancy, but not this part. All right, let me just... Uh... So 34.6 or 34.7, I guess. Yeah, that's what I got. 